Hello, this is Katie again, and I wanted to uh, make an Easter card. I didn't do nearly enough. I made a few um, off camera, but I wanted to do a series and somehow I just keep failing at doing that. So uh, I wanted to show you some coloring. I've prepped some of it. I'm going to cut this off because I had to open up my glue and I squeezed it off there. I don't want to run into that again. So I prepped some of it by uh, stamping the guys that I want. This is the Bunny Friends set from Pretty Pink Posh. I will show you some coloring. Um, I am going to recreate a card that I saw by Nikki New Cards uh, that I thought was really cute. So what I have are the base card. Uh, it'll be just a landscape view. And then I have, um, I use my little Inker Designs uh, background the stitched rectangle but the biggest one which just puts stitches it doesn't cut anything so this is also the size of the front of the card and I just put stitches on that panel that we'll be adhering everything to and then these are I don't know the the full name but I think it's like stitched clouds or something stitch cloud border dies uh, from Lawn Fawn so I just took uh, the end of a card on both ends and cut off a taller one and a shorter one so we're gonna tuck some bunnies in there. Uh, so I pre-did that part and I'll do some ink blending as well. Hopefully that goes smoothly. I'll be using the the two little distress inks, um, Spun Sugar and Shabby Shutters. And uh, hopefully that'll work out. But uh, I do wanna show you some of the coloring on these guys. So for uh, the bunnies, I used, or I've used before and I will use again, I'm going to use uh, C1 just for kind of some of their edges a little bit, uh, like around his hand. I'll zoom in a little bit for the coloring portion. Um, maybe around his chin a little bit and around the eggshell. And then um, the ears here, a little swipe on his forehead, the sides of his face, and I'm going to be using the colorless blender because that worked out pretty well with this shade on my last bunnies. Uh, I talked about in my last video how I've had the colorless blender for a long time, probably since the beginning. It was probably in the first batch of Copics that I bought but I just don't use it and I think I was reminded of it in a video that I saw um, that it can be pretty helpful actually um, so in this case I don't want to color in the entire bunny gray but I want to give him a color that isn't white uh, I am NOT a professional Copic person obviously. So I will fill in what you've seen. Sorry if some of that was off camera. Um, let me zoom out just a tiny bit. Okay. So then I'll take the colorless blender, which is just zero. And then um, I don't have to go in the, the ear lines necessarily, but we'll use it and just kind of go over and even drag it into um, his whole face, bring it down. So go over it and just kind of drag it in as well. And I'm not sure exactly what it's doing. It could be dragging some of the color, um, which is probably exactly what it's doing. Dragging some of the gray wherever you're moving the marker and blending it out at the same time so you don't see those harsh lines that you drew and then he's just got more of a, a hint of gray to him. So those two next to each other, hopefully you can see it's a little more gray all over versus the lines on this one. So we'll blend this guy out and blend out his chin line.
and then I'll be doing their noses pink. Okay, so I'll blend out, I'm just gonna swoosh this back and forth. <coughs> um, just to save some time, I will die cut these guys out uh, off camera and then we'll come back and place them. But I wanted to show you at least the coloring part. Um, since I don't edit my videos, it just would take way too long and I don't have any software for that. I, I don't show you everything and I do just pause my phone that's recording and do it without recording. Um, so I wanted a little variation on what I do show you. Most of the time I color off camera because it's not very instructional, at least I don't think so. It's not like I've taken Copic classes or anything, but I can at least show you how I color things. So you can kind of just move it in little circles to get it to blend out that color. And you can see the tip of my uh, marker is actually stained blue. Um, I haven't used it on anything since this light gray recently, so it could stain it, but it definitely doesn't come off when you use it again. Um, I'm always tempted to just kind of wipe it off on a side paper when I see that it's been stained, but you can see it's not coming off. <clears throat> so it works just fine. Okay, so that was C1 in the Colorless Blender. We will do his um, carrot that he's holding. This one is YR16. I'll just do the lines and then cover the lines of the carrot and then go in with Y38, which is called honey, and just go over those as well as coloring in the middle. That's kind of how I blend color on something like that. You can see it's a little darker on the edges, for example. I think I got a little bit on his arm, oh well. And then the for the greens, for all the leaves in here or the top of the carrot, I'll be using G05 and G14. Uh, so G05 will be the darker one. And I'll just put that at the base of the flowers. Went out a little bit on that one. And then just color out to the end and over the dark again to kind of blend that out. And in the last video, I don't know if I explained it because I was doing the coloring off video, but I actually went over the shading on the butterfly and the leaves with uh, the colorless blender as well. So you kind of can just color over the uh, where the lines meet if you want to blend that any further. And like I said, it doesn't stain it at all or come off on the next color that you do. Uh, and then for, let's see. Uh, I'm going to blend out his a little more. I can see some of the lines that I made. Okay. So for their noses, I'll just use uh, RV13. And then a really, really light uh, pink RV10 I'll use on this guy's little tummy because it's the lightest pink I have, which is still pretty pink, honestly, but that's pretty cute. And then I'll use the same light pink because it's the lightest one I've got uh, for the insides of their ears. And hopefully this shade will be pretty close to the uh, sponge sugar Distress ink that I'll be blending into the top of the panel 
which is kind of the sky. Okay, and then I have a couple colors for the stripes on the egg. I just po picked a random kind of darker blue and pink combo uh, to just alternate. I have BG01 for the blue. So we'll just alternate that one and R32, which is peach. I have a corally peach color, trying not to color his hands. And then for the flowers, I've picked uh, for, I'm going to do one of them purple, y, or uh, V15, which is mallow, and lilac, which is V04. Um, so I was just going to line the bottom half with that and then hopefully blend it now these two i believe are let's see v15 and v04 are next to each other on sandy allnock's uh, hex chart which means they should blend together pretty well and they kind of are which is fine um and so i can just go over it again and leave it at that you can always like I said, bring your colorless blender in and do more. And then um, someday I'll branch out to three colors per thing. Uh, like using yellow on the tips of leaves um, to make it look like a little brighter green. I'm just not that good at blending yet, so I need to work on that. Um, I'm going to do RV 14 and 13 for this flower. And just try and blend that out a little bit with the marker itself and then uh, for these two I'll probably just repeat one of the colors or I could do both again we'll do 14 on the outer portion of this one And then fill in the rest with RV13. And I'll do yellow in the center uh, for the two flowers that have middles. And the yellow I chose is Y08 Acid Yellow. It's just kind of a bright yellow. And then I will do the uh, V15 and V04 combo again for this flower. Make sure I don't get the yellow in the middle. Okay, and then uh, the last thing, I'm going to just try and do a little bit of the edges and then blend it out with a colorless blender for the eggshell. And I'm going to use the lightest purple I have, which is Pale Heath V000. Um, so I'll just kind of go down the side. with that and then hopefully this works out. We'll zoom in a little bit for this guy. And just kind of grab it from the edges and blend it out. Hopefully I don't make the color disappear too much. So it's just got a light purple shading. Looks fine for me. So I will zoom out here. And I'm just going to pause while I die cut all these guys out. And then we can um, do the ink blending and put the card together. 
Okay, so I have die cut all of these guys out. I'm going to set them off to the side. I'll leave them there because they're cute so you can see them. And so the card base I can leave to the side. So for this one, we're going to do um, the Sponge Sugar Distress Ink. I think this is the blender I used for it last. And I just hope this works out. Hopefully I'm not shaking you. Okay, so just kind of go on the sides and the corner and bring in kind of a pink cloud. And I usually just tap off a little bit onto a post-it note so I don't bring in so much of the dark pink. So I'll just go down a little bit, come in on the corners a little more. Kind of go. Okay, so that works for me. So I'll set this aside. We have a little bit of a pink sky. And then for these two, sorry about that, we will do the shabby shutters. I'm not sure if that's the ink blender I used in the past. Hopefully this green is okay. I don't have a lot of shades of the original Distress Inks. So. We just want some. It's a good grass color though, that's fine. Just get some more. Dab it off. Okay. Just want a hint of it, don't want to color the whole thing. This one's a little thinner, so it's a little more fragile. I just want to make sure to pin it down. And then we'll give this one some more to the edge. Okay, so we've got those two. And that worked out just fine. Okay. So, let's see. what we want to do is I'm going to lift this one up. on, I think I want to lift it up on some foam tape, and we'll do this along the bottom, and I just rip off of the, the foam roll, I don't really measure that much. We'll put some going up the sides as well. Okay. So then this one will be the first one. I'll line it up with the bottom and the sides. Then we'll be able to stick some bunnies behind it and also in front of it. So we'll do more foam tape along the bottom of this one. Almost perfect. And that one won't need any more on the sides, so that should be fine. So then we'll line this up on the bottom and the corner. This would be a little bit of a taller card. Uh, so if you want to send it through the mail, maybe protect it a little more if you make something that tall. Okay, so now we have the back panel. I think I will uh, stamp the sentiment first. 
And I believe I want the uh, Easter sentiment. I think it might be on the, the friends with the people on it. So I'm going to try and find that really quick. I'm going to pause. Okay, so the Happy Easter sentiment is in the uh, Easter friends, the ones, the stamp set with the people on it. So we will mount that. Be extra careful with the ink pad around something you've already done because you will probably drop it on a card once in your card making career. I think I've done that mm, twice and I've been super, super careful ever since. So we will stamp that up here, clean that later. Okay, so then now that I've done that part, I'll hear this to the card and then we can put our bunnies down. Just want to make sure it's got plenty of adhesive. So then we want to make sure we at least line this along the top. And the sides so we don't have any of the top exposed where the card is connected and then take some bunnies and this guy can be I've got my glue ready to go and we'll just this wasn't clogged a little bit ago. Okay. So I've been using a mechanical pencil to unclog this glue. It's driving me crazy. I have one of them with the little unclogger thing, but I'm not sure where that glue is. Oops, that didn't go well. Okay. So we'll put glue Come on, it just came out. Okay, I'm going to pause and fix this. Okay, so I have so many of these, I just cut the tip off because I could not get it unclogged. I need to get more of those uh, unclogging tips, the needle tip things. Okay, so we will put him behind here and stick him down. Okay. And then just put a little bit of glue. This is really sticky glue. So it should be good. In front there. And then hide this guy back here a little bit. And then this one can be up front. And I can stick in some flowers. Put this one over here. Check this one. And I may or may not um, cut more of these flowers and add more to the card. I'm trying to figure out where I want to place them. Um, there's a smaller version 
of this one on the stamp set too, so I could cut littler ones and it has a die as well. And then this one we'll put behind the back row, coming out right there. Okay. So Nikki's card also had some, I think, of the, the new gems from Pretty Pink Posh. I could add sequins to this as well. Um, I think the 3D scene is pretty cute. Uh, I kind of like it as it is, but everyone feels differently about adding embellishments and stuff like that. So we have our little bunnies sticking out and uh, that's it. So hopefully this video isn't too long and you learned something and that's about it. Thank you for watching. Bye.